Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Minato didn't die, and trained Naruto, part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, let's start the story. After 12 years, crying. That's the first thing Kashina remembered, her baby, her precious little boy, crying. This wasn't the first time she'd woken up. No, she'd slipped in and out of consciousness for years, but every single time the first thing that came to mind was her baby, her little Naruto. She wasn't sure how much time had passed in the outside world, but she was certain it had been a long, long time. She wanted to see him so badly. She wanted to hold him in her arms, talk to him, care for him, and love him like only she could. She wanted to be a mother to her son so badly, but what could she do? She'd been in a coma for what seemed like years upon end, and yet things could still get worse. Here she was, trapped in a dark cell. The bare stone floor beneath her was cold, and aside from a thin blanket, some hay in the corner of the room, and two buckets in the opposite corner there were no other comforts, and she used that word very loosely. She hadn't always been here, before this she'd been in a hospital room of sorts, as her captor did not want her dying. But she'd been waking up much more frequently than before, so with her out of the woods per se, whoever was in charge had apparently decided that she'd be moved to somewhere less conspicuous and more secure. The first time she woke up, she learned that Shimura Danzo was the one holding her captive. Minato had told her of him and his secret Anbu organization, Root. She knew he was bad news, and so did her husband they just never thought he'd do something this treasonous. Ishina. The redhead turned. Kneeling next to her was her one and only, the only man she'd ever loved, and the father of her precious child, her husband, Namikaze Minato, the Yandame Hokage of Kanahagakur. He had been in a coma with her, in and out of consciousness much like she was. They didn't always catch each other awake, but that didn't matter, as neither of them remained conscious for very long. Yes. She replied, her voice weak and somewhat raspy from years of little to no use. He put his hand over hers, a deep determination showing behind his blue pools. I'm sorry, he replied, his voice in a similar state to hers, it's taken so long, but I finally have enough chakra we're getting out of here Danzo had kept them weak. He had made sure that they'd never gained enough chakra to fight back and had only given them enough care to keep them barely alive. He underestimated exactly how smart Minato was though. The yellow flash was no one's prisoner, and he was about to prove just that. At ready we're getting out of here, and then we'll be able to see Naruto again. Minato gave a shaky smile to his wife, who returned it with one of her own. And that's our report, Hokage-sama, said Kakashi. Saratobi Hiruzen, the Sandame Hokage sighed. He wondered why nothing was ever simple when his surrogate grandson was involved, no, nothing was ever simple at all. I see. Thank you, Team 7 is dismissed. Kakashi, could you stay behind? There are some things I would like to further discuss with you. Nodding, Hada Kakashi complied with the Hokage's wishes. Turning to his students, the Jinin told them they were dismissed for the day and that they should go home and rest. Sakura nodded, a relieved smile appearing on her face. Sasuke gave his usual HN and Naruto merely shrugged. Kakashi expected the responses he received from Sakura and Sasuke, but not Naruto. He'd been too subdued. He'd been that way ever since leaving Wave. His blonde student looked like he had a lot on his mind, and the copy nin wasn't sure what was wrong with the boy. The three genin left the room, closing the door behind them. Usually, this was around the time Sakura would ask Sasuke for a date, he'd refuse, and then Sakura would be asked out by Naruto, also refusing however, only two of the four things occurred today though. Sakura asked Sasuke out and was rejected, as usual, but when she turned around expecting to have to deal with Naruto, he merely looked at her briefly, seemingly lost in thought over something, before offering her goodbye and walking away. Sakura stood there, slack-jawed and wide-eyed. Naruto was acting weird. What the hell just happened? She asked herself. Uzumaki Naruto was a brash and loud boy. He was unrefined, had almost no manners and very little care for them. He didn't mind being this way, mostly because he didn't know there was any other way to be. No one had ever taught him such things. There was no one who could scratch that, there was no one who would. The Hokage was a busy man, he couldn't devote a large amount of time to Naruto and everyone else aside from Tuchi and AM hated the boy, he was wrong, of course, but he didn't know that. The Kashi was a mystery to him. He honestly didn't know how the man felt about him since he seemed so indifferent in general. Despite wanting to believe otherwise, he was positive Sakura didn't enjoy his company, and the only thing she did was frown over the Acheha. Sasuke himself thought Naruto was below him. Naruto heaved a sigh. Truth be told, he'd not been feeling too great since his mission in Wave. Sure, they'd saved the day and all that, but that was exactly why he was feeling down now. In Wave, where nobody knew him or what burden he carried, he was accepted. Hell, he was hailed as a hero, but here, here in his own hometown, he couldn't walk down the street without being glared at or ignored altogether. 
he couldn't buy anything without prices being doubled or sometimes tripled, and he couldn't go to many of the restaurants ramen being his favorite food isn't the only reason it's all his diet consisted of. The contrast between the public reactions he'd received in Wave and what he received here was really getting to him, and he was certainly feeling down. He wasn't sure the mask he'd created when he was younger, the one that hit his true persona, could last much longer. He wasn't sure he could continue to grin and bear things he wasn't sure he could continue being the happy knucklehead he was viewed as. He wasn't even sure he wanted to. And somewhere, in the deeper, darker parts of his heart, the parts that he couldn't fix, he wasn't sure he even wanted to remain in Konoha. Leaving another sigh, Naruto trudged on, doing what he could to ignore the villagers around him, as he made his way to his apartment. The apartment where he'd spend yet another day alone. So the Kyubi's chakra has started to manifest itself. Said the Hokage, the question more rhetorical than anything. He wasn't sure he liked what he was hearing. On one hand, if Naruto could harness it correctly, the Kaiubi could be a great asset to the boy, as well as the village, but on the other hand, Hiruzen knew that this could turn into a disaster. Yes though, he seemed in complete control while using it, maybe a little more brutal and careless, but it was still him. Currently, Hokage-sama I'm more concerned with how he's feeling. He's been fairly reclusive since we left Wave, replied Kakashi. Any of his usual disinterest was gone. Though he acted the part most of the time, it was part of how he coped with his losses, but that didn't mean he didn't care for Naruto. He was happy to have his sensei's son on his team, and after seeing his performance in Wave, he was determined to train his team harder. He'd almost lost his students, and he was tired of losing the people important to him. Garrison leaned back in his chair, inhaling from his pipe. Everything Kakashi was telling him was troubling. Naruto was unhappy. That would not do. The Kaiubi could free itself based purely on the child's mental state. Hiruzen frowned, knowing something had to be done to ensure nothing of the sort happened. Maybe it's time I call for Jiraiya. The boy will certainly be happier if he learns of his godfather, and I'm sure my student would be happy to teach Minato's boy. It also wouldn't be too bad of an idea to have Jiraiya tell him of Kishina, thought Hiruzen, even though she had her enemies, there is little consequence if he knows of her. It would also help matters if her name unintentionally happens to slip out at some point. We've already thoroughly hidden her connection to Minato after all. Yes, this will have to do for now. The Hokage leveled his gaze on Kakashi and said, for now, try to bring about a friendship between him and his teammates. I will call Jiraiya, and from there we the Hokage meant to continue, but a flash of yellow at Kakashi's back stopped him in his tracks. His eyes widened, not believing what was in front of him. Kakashi, having felt a presence turned around, and his visible eye widened much like the Sandane. Yes, sensei. Standing in front of him on shaky legs was Yandane and his wife, two people who'd been confirmed to have died the night the Kaiubi was sealed. They looked malnourished and thin, but they were certainly alive. We made it. I'm so glad Minato's eyes closed and he collapsed to the floor, exhausted. Kishina, who was still capable of standing, if only barely, kneeled slowly next to her husband, worried over his condition evident in her eyes. Watching Minato fall had also shaken Sandame out of his shock and he immediately barked orders. Or, rabbit, seal this room. No one gets in or out unless I say otherwise. Cat, get our best medic nins over here now. Tiger, get me Anoichi, and Kakashi, the Sandane paused here, looking the Jounin in the eyes, find Naruto. With everything you just told me, this couldn't have happened at a better time. I think it's time he met his parents. Shimura Danzo was a man of few words, and even less emotion. It was rare that he let any of them show through, even anger, but today it could not be helped. The old Warhawk had underestimated his opponent, and there was no way it wasn't going to come back and bite him the ass. He stared at the empty cell in fury, wondering how he could have been so careless. His frown deepened as he questioned himself, thinking over what possessed him to not find a better way to prevent Minato's actions. Anzo sighed to himself, deciding that now was not the time to dwell over his mistakes of the past. Minato and Kishina were gone, his plans foiled, and now he would need to flee Konoha. He'd managed to avoid Hiruzen's eyes until now, but this little indiscretion would undoubtedly send the entirety of Kanoha's wrath down upon him. Sigh. Immediately, a pale child appeared at Danzo's back, kneeling before him in a show of the utmost respect. He seemed no older than twelve, and his voice sounded void, hollow of anything. Yes, Danzo-sama. I am leaving the village, but you must stay here. Keep an eye on things, especially Uzumaki Naruto. I want reports on what happens in Kanoha every so often. Make sure nothing is outdated, but don't become suspicious. That is all, you are dismissed. And with that, Danzo walked into the shadows, intending to never set another foot in Konoha, unless it was a situation that was favorable for his ambitions like being named Hokage. Inoichi was led into the office where he was met with the sight of Yandane and his wife. His mouth dropped open, and he paused, shocked beyond movement. 
as a ninja and head of the interrogation division there wasn't much that surprised him, but when two people who were confirmed to be dead 12 years ago suddenly pop up alive in the Hokage's office, you're going to be speechless. Wa Yamanaka and Waichi couldn't even come up with a proper word. I shall explain later, the Hokage said, as he averted his eyes from the medic nin healing Minato to look at Inoichi. There's not a lot of information we have at this point, but we desperately need to know what happened. Inoichi, look through their minds, and tell me what you see. Start on the day of the Kaiubi attack, then work your way forward till today. And do it as quickly as possible. Inoichi, though still shocked, knelt next to Kashina and got to work immediately. She smiled at him and nodded her head, understanding what he had to do, as a medic nin tended to her injuries. Nodding back to her, he ran through a series of hand signs before coming to a stop and staring at her. Saisha so know with those words, Inoichi descended into her mind. The both of them remained motionless for nearly 15 minutes before Inoichi blinked, then blinked again before his face turned stony. He turned to the sandame, a deep frown of his face. Okage-sama, this is very bad. The Sandame frowned in response, but ordered Inoichi to speak, and thus, the Mind Walker told everyone present exactly what he saw and how grave things were. Minato had just used the Horatian to transport himself and the Kaiubi deep into the forest, far from Kanoha and the villagers. The Sharingan was no longer in Kaiubi's eyes, but the Yellow Flash highly doubted that the absence of it would suddenly make the enraged Biju more docile. In fact, it probably made the threat even worse, as the fox now had control over itself and was far better at using its body than the mask Chiha who had been manipulating it. And, as much as Minato hated to admit it, he only had one option left. Briefly flashing away, he returned almost instantly with Kashina and their son. Kashina we don't have much time, we have to seal the Kaiubi into Naruto. Kashina's eyes widened. No. She screamed, there has to be some other way. Our baby boy. We can't do that to him, Minato. He's our son. There isn't time for anything else, and I certainly couldn't ask someone else to let their child bear this burden. But, Kashina's eyes welled with tears before she buried her face into her husband's chest, sobbing. Minato tried to stay strong for her, but tears were rolling down his cheeks, as well. I'm sorry, Kashina, this is the only option we have left. Summoning an altar and placing Naruto on it, he turned to the Kaiubi as he ran through hand seals. Appearing behind him was an apparition clothed in a pure white kimono. Its face was that of a demon's sharp teeth, piercing eyes of the darkest black that instilled fear instantly, and horns atop its head. The Kaiubi, understanding what Minato intended to do, narrowed its eyes and launched forward to attack him only to be stopped dead in his tracks. Kishina, though disconnected from the Bijuu, still had some measure of control. Using her chakra chains, she bound Kaiubi and prevented him from harming Minato and Naruto. Her husband looked at her, a sad smile on his face, as he launched forward. Through the use of the Shaiki Fujin, he pulled out half of the Kaiubi's chakra and sealed it into himself. The Kaiubi, dazed yet unrelenting, continued to struggle as Minato turned to his son before speeding through another set of hand signs. Roaring, the Kaiubi thrust its massive claws forward, taking advantage of a slip in Kashina's focus. She was tired and so afraid of what her son would have to endure that her attention drifted for the briefest of moments. Seeing what would happen if they didn't intervene, Minato and Kashina, in a desperate attempt to rescue their child, jumped into the path of the Kaiubi's claws. A single claw tore through Kashina and Minato's bodies, stopping right before it could impale Naruto. Blood trickled down the Biju's claws, but Kashina and her husband did not care if they were to die, so long as Naruto was safe. Aki Fuin, Minato struggled, crimson liquid bubbling over his lips and down his chin, and then the seal activated, dragging the Kaiubi into it, where it would find itself spending its foreseeable future. Only seconds after the Biju was sealed, the Shinigami who ruled over the Shaiki Fujin prepared to take Minato's soul, but the Shinigami did not count on one thing, Kishina. The red-headed, hot-tempered, wife of the Yandame Hokage, refused to let such a thing happen to her husband. She wouldn't allow the Shinigami to force Minato into combat with the Kaiubi within its belly, not after the sacrifices they'd already made. If they were going to die, she was going to make damn sure they at least got to rest in peace. But the last of her strength, her chakra chains materialized and grabbed at Minato's soul, wrapping around it and pulling. Didn't think I'd just let you take his soul did you? The Shinigami, seeing what a mere mortal was daring him to do, pulled back. The tug of war continued on, but Kishina's strength was quickly draining, and the Shinigami would not be denied. With a vicious tug, it pulled forth Minato's soul, Kishina's chains, and by extension, her soul, as well. But the swift downward strike, it severed their souls from their bodies and vanished as they dropped lifelessly to the ground or at least, that's what the Shinigami thought. Kishina had not participated in the Shaiki Fujin, and so by taking her soul as payment for his summoning, even if it was only a little bit of it, he voided as part of the contract. 
Though half of the Kaiubi remained sealed within Minato, neither he nor Kashina would have their souls taken from them as payment. Life drains out of Kashina and Minato as they lie motionless in the clearing, their son crying all the while. Then, where there were once only three bodies, there were now seven. Standing over the downed forms of the Yandame Hokage and his wife were Danzo and three of his root operatives. A small, sinister smile crept onto Danzo's lips. Before him was an opportunity he couldn't pass up. From there, said Inoichi, Danzo's operatives rushed them to their base. He wanted to take Naruto as well, but after setting up suitable folk corpses of Minato and Kashina, he could already hear you closing in. Seeing how Naruto would not stop crying, he saw him as a flight risk and left him where he was. Once at his base, his operatives did everything within their power to tend to Minato's and Kashina's injuries to make sure they pull through. It was touch and go, but thanks to Kashina's Uzumaki genes and Minato's new status as a Jinchuriki, they made it through. This was the point where Kashina passed out and she stayed that way for quite a while. She woke up a year later based on a conversation she had with Danzo. She'd been in a coma and he told her that the minute she and Minato were out of the woods and awake he would begin turning them into his perfect weapons. After that, the two of them were conscious very infrequently over the next 12 years. This is the first time they've managed to stay awake for very long. The Hokage was furious, his fists clenched around his pipe and within seconds, it snapped in half. He had been lenient with his old teammate, he tried to get him to shut down Root without having to resort to violence, but now the man had gone too far. Saratobi Hirazan would have Danzo's head, he swore his very life on it. I'm Danzo, he said, looking to the Anbu who'd brought him in Oichi. Take any reinforcements you think you need, and once you locate him, alert me immediately. Danzo has severely overstepped his boundaries, and by the end of this day I will end his life. Go. The Anbu complied immediately. In Konoha, there was one thing that was absolute. No one crosses the Hokage. While the Anbu searched through every inch of Kanoha looking for Danzo, Hiruzen stared down at his successor and the man's wife. While the damage done by malnutrition could not be taken care of right away, he was happy to see Minato and Kashina looking a little healthier than they had only moments ago. Yet, despite how things were changing for the better, the sight before him still infuriated him. For Danzo to have dared to do anything like this, it lit a flame of fury within Sandame's heart. Siratobi sama started Kashina shakily, Naruto where's my baby? Hiruzen frowned. He had already called for the boy, and he knew this would be the best thing that could happen for Naruto, but he wasn't looking forward to the conversation that would follow. His successor had trusted him. He knew that even though Minato had been dead, if he'd had time to talk to him, Minato would have requested that Hiruzen keep his boy safe, that the village looked to him as a hero and not the beast that had nearly destroyed it. The Sandane would not lie to them when the time came. He had failed their son, he had failed them. The Kashi should be bringing him now. I'm sure he'll be happy beyond words when he gets to see you too, replied Hiruzen. After we explain that you're his parents, Naruto had just made it to his apartment and, as he slid his key into the door, he noticed the newest addition to it. It was another red scrolling of the word demon written repeatedly. After he'd wiped the last set of graffiti off a few days before his mission, he hadn't seen any more of it on his door. Initially, he assumed the Kanoha citizens had finally given him a break or that they were afraid of what skills he might have now that he was a shinobi he was wrong. If they were scared, it only meant they were cautious enough to avoid messing with him while he was in the village. Grumbling about having to clean his door again, Naruto turned his key, opened the door, and walked in. Just as he was about to shut it behind him, a foot slid in the way, stopping him from doing so. Thinking it was a particularly bold citizen, he fingered a kunai, contemplating fighting back for once. His decision only lasted a split second before he loosened his grip on the weapon. If he hurt this person or even wound up killing them, the civilian council would just turn it on him. With only the villager he hurt, as a witness or none if he killed the person, there would be no one to speak in his defense. Grimacing, Naruto opened the door. Relief washed over the orange-clad genin as Kakashi stood in his doorway. Yo, Naruto, greeted Kakashi, raising his hand. Hey, Kakashi-sensei, replied Naruto, his grimace shifting into a broad grin. His mask had already slipped back on, whether he knew it or not. What are you doing here? Do we have another mission? He asked excitedly. He wouldn't mind leaving the village again. Even if he ended up stuck with Sasuke for another week or two, it was better than staying in Konoha while he was feeling so down. Well, it is a mission of sorts started by Kakashi, trailing off, as his blonde student's grin grew into a full smile, just not for you, he added, Hokage-sama asked me to retrieve you. It's very important. Naruto's smile faded and he wanted to ask if this could wait until tomorrow morning. He was already feeling down and didn't want to sit through a lecture that would probably be about his use of the Kaiubi's chakra and wave. He was a shinobi under the Hokage's command though, he knew he couldn't refuse.
Geez if this is about the Kaiubi, Jiji could have just had me stay behind with you, complained Naruto, stepping back outside before shutting his door. He was about to lock it when Kakashi put his hand on the boy's shoulder, and in the next second they were gone, a swirl of leaves marking their exit. Garazin watched as Kakashi and Naruto appeared in his office. Kakashi shot an eye smile his way as he let go of Naruto's shoulder, and the young Uzumaki held his stomach, looking a little sick and disoriented. Sensei, you could have warned me before doing that, said Naruto, a hand over his mouth. Naruto vowed he wouldn't turn his back on his sensei when he wanted to take him somewhere ever again. The risk of losing his lunch or dry heaving was too high for his tastes. Sorry Naruto. This was urgent, replied Kakashi. Upon hearing his name, Naruto's parents looked him over. Kashina's eyes watered as she put her hands to her mouth in a silent gasp. Minato just looked on, marveling at how much his son looked like him and his wife. Naruto, called the Sandame. The young Jinchuriki still hadn't looked towards them, too busy with trying to get a hold over his gag reflex to notice whom he was in the presence of. Look this way. There are some people here I think you need to meet. The medic nins, Inoichi, and his Anbu had all been shooed out of the room. While it had been made clear enough that Naruto was Minato and Kashina's son while he and Kashina had been healed, he thought it best for their reunion to be a more private matter. Naruto groaned as he complied with Hiruzen's order. Turning, he was about to complain to his sensei over the whole Shunshin thing again, but when he laid eyes on the people before him, they went wide. Initially, Minato and Kashina thought he was just surprised to see them, the Sandame and Kakashi knew that was not the case, and the two parents were realizing it just as quickly. I it's Yandame. Yelled Naruto so loudly the shinobi waiting outside could hear him, Jiji. It's really Yandame. I thought he was dead. How'd this happen? Never mind. Who cares? This is great. Hiruzen noticed that apparently the boy held no ill will for his father. If nothing else, that was good. Sandame saw Mahirazin's heart rate quickened as he looked at Kishina. She'd sounded so lost, and looking at her now, he could see she was hurt. Why doesn't he know who we are? Kakashi looked away as a tear streamed down Kishina's cheek, and Hiruzen sighed. Naruto, called the Hokage once more, be quiet. There are some things you need to know now. Naruto, though ecstatic, caught the tone of Sandame's voice. The seriousness of it put a damper on his mood and made him calm up. There's no point in beating around the bush, started Hiruzen as he walked back to his chair and sat down. Now more than ever, the age showed on his face. His wrinkles seemed more prominent. You could see the years of sorrow and work reflected in his eyes, and for the first time, Naruto noticed how fragile the man seemed at times. Naruto, Minato Namikaze, and his wife, Kishino Uzumaki are your parents. Naruto's eyes shot towards the two of them. His mind raced, emotions swelled within him. Anger, sadness, euphoria, surprise, confusion overwhelmed him, and the next thing he knew, something that had never happened aside from when he was beyond exhausted occurred. Naruto hit the floor with a thud, passed out. Hiruzen, said Kishina. This time she did not sound lost, she did not look hurt. Her voice was stern, his name came out of her mouth with no honorifics, no respect. She sounded angry and looked livid. A fire burned behind her eyes. It was a rage he hadn't seen her direct at anyone ever. Though shaky, Kishina stood to her feet, her fiery red hair swaying, as she did. Hiruzen looked upon her visage and right now, at this very moment, had never felt so unnerved in his life. You're going to tell me right now, she continued, her voice low, why doesn't our son know who we are? Folding his hands in front of his face, Hiruzen sighed tiredly. The time had come. After I'd arrived at the scene to find the two of you dead and Naruto alone and crying I scooped him up and immediately had the boy cared for. The next day I addressed the village and let them know that he was their savior, that it was your wish you be viewed as a hero that you'd sealed the Kaiubi into him, Minato, Hiruzen paused here, expecting some sort of reaction from the boy's parents. He received none. I knew that you always wished the Jinchuriki could be seen for the heroes they were, not as pariahs and not as mere weapons. But I made a grave mistake. It was too soon. The hurt was still too recent in our village. We'd lost so many to the Kaiubi, and the citizens, shinobi and civilians alike did not take well to the news. They hated Naruto for merely existing and called for his immediate execution. They did what? Yelled Minato, oppressive red chakra swirling around him as his eyes changed from blue to crimson. Hiruzen dared not continue as his successor tried to rein in his emotions. Kishina went over to him and wrapped him in her arms, attempting to calm her husband. After a moment, Minato's eyes returned to their normal color and the Kaiubi's chakra receded. Yandane couldn't believe it. The village is his home. The place he'd sworn to protect. The place he'd attempted to sacrifice his life his family's lives for had walked all over his will. They'd tried to have his son killed. Seeing the mistake I made, I passed a law that made speaking of the Kaiubi forbidden, an S-rank secret punishable by death. 
the older generation was lost, but I'd hoped it would at least allow Naruto some friends on his own. I was wrong. The children's parents merely told them to stay away from him, and in the village, he was either shown outright hate or ignored. Around his birthday it was particularly bad. There were some incidents. What kind? Growled Kashina. So help me, she thought, if they'd laid a hand on my baby, I'll run them through with my sword and my chains. There were a few instances in which he'd been chased by mobs seeking his death. He'd been caught and beaten once, and only once. It was the first time. I was busy, and Kakashi, whom I'd usually have to keep watch over, was out on a mission. The Nanbu I thought I could trust had been appointed the task to watch over him, and they decided to turn a blind eye to the manhunt the Anbu, and those responsible for the mob were executed. Minato clenched his fists. He was weak now, there was nothing he could do in his current state, but when he regained his strength, he was going to show this village the error of its ways. Why would they do this? They had to have realized they were trying to kill their Hokage's child. They did not know Kashina. What? Why? Kashina gritted her teeth, trying to restrain herself from going out into the village right now and starting a bloodbath. I made that an S rank secret, as well let me finish, said Hiruzen, raising his hand when he saw Kashina begin to respond to his words, you and Minato had many enemies outside of Konoha. We were recovering, and I could not take the risk of that of his heritage reaching the other villages, especially Iwagakur, Hiruzen took a breath, I'm sure you're wondering why I couldn't have at least told Naruto, but the boy is excitable, and after receiving such harsh treatment from the village, he sought their acknowledgement. He craved attention, and pulled pranks. If he knew you were his parents I have no doubt he would have told anyone whether they were willing to listen or not. Besides with how much they hate the boy, I did not put it past the villagers to spread his heritage to other nations. It does not matter whether they believe the boy or not. If they're smart enough to realize he could be killed over it, I'm positive the news would have spread like the wind. And what if Jiraiya asked Minato? Surely, his sensei had not left his son to the mercy of the village. Hiruzen shook his head. He's not stepped foot into the village since before the attack. Initially, he was too devastated to return here when he learned of your fate, but after that, he decided to take a proactive role in Naruto's life, just not in the way you may have wanted. Jiraiya has a role in this village. He is our spymaster, and his network demands his attention. He could not stay in Konoha, and surely you wouldn't want him taking Naruto with him, would you? They could have both been killed that way. That is not to say he did nothing though, said the Sandame, he supplied Naruto with money every month, and he kept tabs on any threats outside the village with direct connection to Naruto in any way, and there has been one. He has told me it is big, and that he would report in more detail once he returns. Minato and Kishina started the Hokage down, none of them speaking. The silence dragged on for minutes, and the tension in the air was palpable. I understand, said Minato, finally. As do I, added Kishina. The Sandame was no fool though. He could see that there was more to it than just that. More than anything though, he feared he'd lost the respect of two people he cared very much about, he could only hope Naruto would take the news better when he woke up, but he doubted it. It's going to take some time for us to forgive you, Hiruzen, continued Minato, but I can see that you did try. Maybe your decisions were poor, you could have done a better job, but you tried. That's more than I can say for the majority of this village. They will be dealt with, interjected by Kashina, her tone daring any form of disagreement. Her family was all she had left, and if anyone dared to mess with it, she'd crush them. If it's fine with you, I'll be taking up the mantle of Hokage again once I've regained my strength. Also, tell Naruto-sensei he will not be joining their team for training anytime soon. We'll be overseeing him. Hiruzen nodded at that, glancing towards Kakashi. This should give me more time to whip Sakura into shape and maybe even set Sasuke straight. Having to deal with fixing all three of their problems, two of which were excessively complex, was a bit much. This though, this I can work with. I wouldn't dream of disagreeing, Minato-sensei. I will say though, you should get in as much as you can within the next two months. The Chunin exams are soon and I plan to enter my team. He knows the cage bunshin, so you might want to take advantage of that and tell him about their special function. Minato's brows rose, surprised at what he was hearing. You have a genin team? He questioned, and my son is on it. And he knows the cage bunshin Kakashi nodded, eyes smiling. Yes, with Ichiha Sasuke and Haruno Sakura, and he learned jutsu on the day he graduated. Kashina perked up at hearing the Ichiha name, her malice slowly dissipating. Sasuke? Wasn't that what Maiko-chan was going to name her boy? How is she doing? Kakashi looked at Hiruzen, and Sandame sighed. It seems there is still much we need to discuss. While Hiruzen, Minato, and Kashina talked about the happenings in the village since their deaths, the Anbu searched the village for Danzo. They tore through his home, questioned the other elders, and checked the outside of the village. While the Anbu searched, Sai watched on. The young Root Shinobi noted that they hadn't located the entrance to Danzo's base yet, and even if they did, the seals in place there would surely kill them. That would not bode well. 
what purpose would their death serve? It would only lead their comrades to our door, and now that Namikas and his wife are free, with their expertise in seals, surely they would find a way to break into the base. I must return and alert the rest of Root. We must vanish. His plan set, Sai used a shunshun to flee. Naruto groaned as he opened his eyes. He could hear some faint chatting around him and wondered what was going on. The last thing he remembered was coming to see the Hokage, and then he was sure he must have dreamed the rest because he met his dead idol, the Yandame Hokage, and then the Sandame up and told him the man was his father. That just couldn't have been real, thought Naruto. I see you're awake, said Kakashi. Sensei I had the weirdest dream that Yandame was alive, started Naruto, raising his body off the couch in the Hokage's office. And he was my dad. Naruto, that wasn't a dream. The young shinobi didn't recognize that voice. He'd never heard it before. Looking towards the voice his eyes fell upon his sensei, the Hokage, and his parents. That wasn't a dream you're really my dad. He asked before looking at Kishina and you're my mom Naruto received no verbal response and instead he found himself gasping for air as Kishina wrapped him up in the tightest hug he'd ever experienced and that wasn't a very long list. Naruto didn't dare show his discomfort though. Despite his struggle to breathe he'd never been so warm before, he'd never felt so loved. Kishina, loosen your grip. He's having some trouble breathing, called Minato. Kishina reluctantly did, as she was told, loosening her grips enough for Naruto to breathe, but she did not let go. Sobbing into her boy's blonde hair, her hands clutched at his shirt. It was as if she thought her child would vanish if she let go of him. Come on, Kishina, let's take Naruto home. We've got a lot of catching up to do. Kishina turned to her husband, tears still flowing down her face, and she smiled. The first true smile he'd seen from her in years. Nodding happily, she made for the door, and Minato followed before looking back. Naruto was still standing there, seemingly confused about what to do now. Well, don't just stand there, son. We're going home. Beaming, Naruto caught up with his parents. Sasuke dry heaved as he backed away from Kakashi, holding his stomach. His sensei had just sent a swift punch into his gut, and, as he looked over to Sakura, watching her struggle to her feet, he questioned whether or not he really wanted to be training right now, a thought that had never really crossed his mind before. With this, his thoughts went back to that day, about two weeks ago. Sasuke leaned against a tree on training ground 7. He'd been woken up early by Kakashi this morning after a late night of training. His sensei had informed him that there would be a team meeting today, despite the fact that they should have had some time off after returning from their mission in Wave yesterday. He was fine with this though, he hoped it would lead to some training, maybe Kakashi had changed his mind about the break. Hi, Sasuke-kun. In his mind, Sasuke sighed exasperatedly as the weakest of his teammates neared him. The pink-haired girl skipped towards him happily and soon stopped at his side. How are you this morning, Sasuke-kun? She chirped. I'm fine, Sakura, replied the Achiha, trying to end the conversation there. He was quite tired of talking to her already and she'd only just come up to him. What do you think Kakashi-sensei called us for? She inquired, not letting up on trying to get him to speak with her. Sasuke merely replied with a shrug, looking away from her. Frowning, Sakura stopped her questioning, and the two of them waited in silence. After half an hour went by, she wondered where their third teammate was, but considering his absence was giving her time alone with Sasuke, she didn't think about it for long. After another 30 minutes of waiting, Kakashi appeared in front of them. Yo, he greeted, sorry for being late. I was on my way here when I saw this lost little girl. I couldn't just let that be, so I helped her find her mother. Sakura wanted to shout at him, calling him a liar, but instead she just settled for narrowing her eyes at him in a glare. She was tired of stating the obvious. Sasuke narrowed his eyes as well, his glare much more menacing than Sakura's. Neither of them managed to elicit any sort of reaction from their sensei though. Seems that we're all here, so let's get started. But sensei, Naruto's not here, said Sakura, confused. I'm aware of that Sakura. Naruto won't be joining us. Now, first things first, I'm going to cut to the chase. Team 7 is going to be training a lot harder starting from today. While Sakura didn't think to ask anything more on the subject her mind now filled with dread at having to train even more Sasuke was different. He was excited, he'd finally be making steps towards his ambition. Aside from that, he wondered if this had anything to do with Naruto. Does increasing our training have anything to do with Naruto's absence? Asked Sasuke. The question sounded simple enough, but Kakashi knew better. He could hear the arrogance in Sasuke's voice and was sure the question, instead of being as innocent as it sounded, translated into the following. You're getting serious now that the dope isn't here to hold anyone back. In a rare display of seriousness from their sensei, he narrowed his eyes at the Achiha. Yes Sasuke, it does have to do with Naruto's absence, but not for the reasons you think. I'm going to be honest here. Thus far, I've not done as good of a job at teaching the three of you as I should have. 
well that fault is mine, you three did contribute to it, started the copy nin, you, Naruto, and Sakura all have amazing potential, as shinobi, but the three of you all have one glaring flaw, and before I could train any of you properly these flaws needed to be addressed. What flaw? Challenges Sasuke, I'm an excellent shinobi. Yes Sasuke, you're a very strong genin. The flaw is not with your skills. It's with your personality. Sakura, I'll be blunt. You're a fangirl. You're too focused on Sasuke, and that has severely crippled your abilities, as a shinobi. This isn't school anymore, and your book smarts alone won't get you through a mission. You need to be able to apply what you've learned, and you just don't have the physical ability a shinobi needs to do so. Your two teammates are far ahead of you, but we will remedy that. Thoroughly. Sakura hung her head, not expecting to hear such a thing from her sensei. Sasuke, on the other hand, smirked. He figured that now, maybe she'd finally take things seriously. Don't smirk at Sasuke. I said all three of you had flaws, chastised Kakashi, wiping the smirk off the young Ichiha's face. Your flaw Sasuke, is your arrogance. You believe you are better than all your peers even though you're not. You were the strongest when you left the academy, but I assure you that you're not even a match for last year's dead last, and their rookie of the year would crush you, as you are now. Simply being of the Ichiha clan does not make you a cut above the rest. With training, anyone can surpass someone they could not defeat before. What makes you think you can even still defeat those you graduated with? Do not let your arrogance blind you. Aside from that, you're driven to reach your goal, to kill that man, but you need to realize that you might not be able to do that alone. The man you want to kill is years ahead of you in terms of experience, and I'm sure he's not just slacking off while you train. You might not be able to catch up not by yourself. Don't isolate yourself, Sasuke. I speak from experience when I say you can't do everything alone. You and I were alike, and I learned the hard way what I'm telling you now. Sasuke seethed, but said nothing. What about Naruto's flaws? Asked Sakura, hoping that having them pointed out could possibly make Sasuke and her feel better. This village doesn't like him. At all. He's been alone for a large portion of his life, and it's affected him deeply. He hides his fears and his anger behind a mask of idiocy and loudness, but I'm not sure how much longer that could have held. He needed people to believe in him and push him to do his best, instead of trying to destroy all he's worked for. If he hadn't gotten them, I'm sure Naruto would have broken apart at some point or gotten himself killed on a mission, because he was trying too hard to prove himself, or simply because he was tired of living in a place that hated him. Silence followed his explanation before he continued. Like I said, the three of you have great potential, but juggling your training while trying to devise a plan to deal with each of your flaws, two of which required a delicate hand if I was to tackle all three at once, was taxing. Not to mention I also needed to actually get you three functioning as a proper team. I can't do everything at once. Naruto is gone now though, he's currently training with two people who care a great deal for his well-being. He won't be training with us for two months, which gives me time to whip you two into shape, as well as work on your flaws. And you should know Sasuke, I'm training you so hard, not simply because Naruto is gone. The thing is, if I don't make you as strong as I can in these two months, when Naruto comes back you won't be able to hold a candle to his skill. Bristling at this, Sasuke balled his fists, determined to make sure he stayed the best and prove Kakashi wrong. Now then, let's get started. Don't space out Sasuke, chastised a copy nin, as he landed a flawless leg sweep against a distracted Acha. Sasuke hit the dirt, the back of his head smacking against it first. Before he could scramble to his feet, he found a kunai to his throat with his teacher kneeling over him in a nonchalant manner that pissed him off more than anything right now. You've lost, said Kakashi, as he stood, this sparring session is over. Time to move on to the next step in today's training. Sakura, go find Kurinai for your daily Jinjutsu training. Sasuke, come with me. We'll be working on your Sharingan a bit more today. Kakashi's students followed his orders, and, as they went their separate ways, a lone girl hid behind a tree, watching them. She didn't move when they left, despite the fact she might be late for her own training if she didn't get going. She was too concerned with one thing she was worried about Naruto. Naruto cursed, as another chain ripped through his last orange jumpsuit. Right now, he and his mother were on the Namikaz Uzumaki clan's personal training grounds. Kishina was currently evaluating him on the use of the Uzumaki clan's adamantine sealing chains. It was his clan's Keke Genkai, and when he returned to his team, he was rubbing it into Sasuke's smug face. Deem thought he was the only one with cool bloodline stuff that couldn't be copied. I'll show him. A month had passed since he'd been reunited with his parents, and to say that they'd been training him into the dirt and even the roots below it was an understatement. As he repelled one of his mother's chains with his own, he thought back to the first day he'd arrived here and the days that followed. Naruto and his parents had just left the Hokage's office, and before the boy could even think to ask them which way they'd be going, his father put his hand on his and his mother's shoulders. 
Naruto had a sinking suspicion he knew where Kakashi got this idea from. Before the young boy could protest, the three of them had vanished in a flash of yellow. Appearing in a rather spacious living room, Naruto waited for his stomach to do flips like it had with Kakashi's shunshin, but the sensation never came, in fact, he found that he rather enjoyed the Horation. He couldn't explain it, but it just felt right. Welcome home, Naruto. Exclaimed Kishina giddily, as she turned on the lights. Naruto looked around, noting how the living room was far larger than his. There were three couches, and two coffee tables. A love seat was on the right end of the room, and a leather chair on the left, near a fireplace. All the chairs were facing a single wall, which is where the TV was. His parents quickly gave him a tour of the Namikaze Uzumaki clan grounds, which were humongous, before they took him back to the living room and proceeded to cut to the chase and tell him what Siratobi had done concerning his lack of knowledge of them and why he did it. The conversation had been a hard one, Kishina and Minato struggled to keep their cool as they related the story to Naruto. Their rage subsided while they enjoyed time with their son, but now that they had to think about it again, they were seething. Naruto himself merely listened. When his parents finished they waited for his response. Naruto wasn't the type to hold grudges. Hell, when he cared for someone he wasn't even the type to truly get angry at them, and he'd always been an understanding boy. Anyone who knew the boy well wouldn't think his next words to be surprising at all. I understand. Jiji did what he could, and that's all I can really ask for. I'll prank him, and that'll be that. We'll be even, grinned Naruto, as he'd already begun thinking about what prank to pull on his grandfather figure. Minato and Kashina looked at the boy in mild surprise, not expecting him to take the news so well. He'd taken it better than they had, and that's when they realized how amazingly special their son was. Already feeling proud of him, they talked for the rest of the night, determined to learn all they could. Naruto told his parents about his team, his few friends, and his other classmates. When he talked about Sasuke, they both frowned. They knew the boy's position, but that didn't mean he had to act the way he did. If nothing else, they needed to set him right. They continued to listen more until he got to Sakura, expressing his feelings for them. Unfortunately, for Sakura, he also told them of her reactions and her attitude with Sasuke. This resulted in his mother ranting about girls, the type of woman she wanted her son to be with, and how Sakura was not under any circumstances worth pursuing at this time. When Naruto asked if it would be alright after she'd matured a little, his mother fixed him with his first ever motherly glare of submission or death and told him that he was better off with someone else. Naruto simply nodded frantically, frightened far more than even when Zabuza wanted to kill him and his team, and decided to give his mother's words some thought. After working some of the fear out of his system, Naruto went on to talk about two people he felt he could call friends. Shikamaru and Choji. Telling his parents of how he used to watch clouds with Shikamaru and share snacks with Choji sometimes brought a smile to Minato and Kishina's faces. They were happy to hear that their son wasn't as alone as they had thought. My other classmates are okay, I guess, stated Naruto, as he went into further detail. He told his parents about Kiba and Ino. Once they heard how Kiba teased Naruto for things like his bad grades while not having amazing grades himself, they determined he was just looking for a way to make sure he wasn't teased. That didn't mean he needed to make Naruto his scapegoat though. As for Ino, they found her to be just as disgraceful to Kanoichi as Sakura. Her fangirl mentality had surely crippled her abilities as a shinobi, and they only hoped she snapped out of it before she got herself or her teammates killed. Briefly, they wondered what would happen if she had to fight Sasuke during the exams. They didn't think her drive to win would outweigh her crush on the boy, and even if it did, Sasuke hadn't slacked off based on his status as Rookie of the Year. The boy would likely pick her apart. Moving on to Shino, Naruto told his folks that the boy was very quiet but didn't seem to dislike him. In turn, his parents told their son that that's just how the Aburam family was. They also told Naruto to try and befriend the boy because he could likely relate to him. How can he relate to me? Inquired Naruto. Well, started by his father, the Aburam family uses bugs as an essential part of their jutsu. Plenty of the villagers find them creepy for that. He can probably relate to how you feel when it comes to being judged based on what is inside of him instead of who he is. Thinking over his father's words with a hum, Naruto nodded before reaching his last classmate, Hinata. She seems nice enough, said their son, as he leaned into the couch, but she's pretty weird. She always talks with a stutter, which isn't bad or anything, but I think she's always sick or something. Kishina raised a slender, red, brow at this. Why? Whenever I talk to her she always turns red, and then she faints. I hope she's gotten better since graduation. She could be in danger if she was that sick on missions, said Naruto, showing concern for the girl. She was weird, yes, but he didn't really think that was a bad thing, and he wouldn't wish her harm, just because he thought she was. He'd be no different from the villagers if he did such a thing. Unlike their son, Minato and Kishina could easily see what was going on, and smiled. 
they weren't yet sure if Hinata's feelings for their child was anything more than a simple crush, but they were at least pleased to know that there may be someone in his generation who saw Naruto in such a way. For now, they would simply hope that he and the girl could become friends. If nothing else, they knew their son needed a better female friend in his life than Sakura. Following that night, Naruto was told that the two of them would now be training him personally for the next two months and that they'd be starting with his academics since they were still in no condition to be able to physically train him. Naruto grumbled at this, but after a talking to from his father about the usefulness of tactics, history, and geography, and how he used them quite often to help him win battles, the younger of the two blondes eventually gave in, especially when he was told about how he could remember anything a cage bunchen experienced. He was thankful for this, because once his mother introduced him to Fuenjutsu he didn't want to read anything else. Why does this seem so easy? I mean, I always heard Fuenjutsu was really hard to figure out so you know I never tried it, but I just get this. I don't understand. Kishina smiled at her son, having already figured he'd have a reaction like this. Kneeling next to him on the floor of their patio, looking over all the scrolls laid out in front of him, she replied. Well, Naruto, that simple. You see, the Uzumaki clan have a few special traits. We have an unrivaled longevity, and we heal faster than others, as well. Our chakra reserves are quite large too. Aside from that, some of us have the ability to develop our Keke Genkai, which through the use of Yun release, allows us to create chains from our chakra known as adamantine sealing chains. That's not our only Keke Genkai though. We have one more, but it's more of a passive thing, and since we never talked about it to anyone outside of those we could trust with our lives, no one knows about it. You see, our clan second Keke Genkai is known as Mugen Tashikan. It's nothing too extravagant, but it's nothing to slouch at either, said Kishina upon seeing Naruto's reaction to the name of their most devastating Keke Genkai. The Mugen Tashikan allows us to have the most intimate understanding of the sealing arts on the planet. It's why the Uzumaki clan was feared for our seals. Fuinjutsu is simple to us, it comes naturally, like breathing, and this is all thanks to Mugen Tashikan. No matter how complex the Fuinjutsu, it won't take you long to understand it, nor will it be hard for you to create advanced seals of your own. Naruto nodded, now having a better opinion of his clan's more subtle Keke Genkai. A few weeks passed, and through the use of Cage Bunshin Naruto was able to jump leaps and bounds in his academics, and, as far as Fuinjutsu was concerned he was already conjuring up some seals that most Jounin couldn't comprehend. Now though, he could finally get to the parts of training he loved most. The physical aspect. His parents had recovered enough strength to start it, and he was beyond excited. Now son, started Minato, Kakashi told me he planned to enter your team in the Chunin exams. Naruto's eyes widened. With that in mind, we've got a little over a month to get you prepared while rebuilding you from scratch. You're going to learn Uzumaki Kenjutsu and Tejutsu. We'll be strengthening your body and improving your speed tenfold. You'll also be learning how to use nature transformation as well as Yun release so we can get you started on learning your other Keke Genkai. Not only that, added Kishina, but I convinced Minato here to teach you Horation. Your understanding of Fuinjutsu should make learning it a piece of cake compared to anyone else. We'll be putting your tactical thinking to the test as well. Your shadow clones are about to get some major use because without them you won't be able to learn all of this in a month. Are you ready, Naruto? Their son merely nodded. He would make them proud. Good, because during the final part of the Chunin exams, which I fully expect you to make it to, I'll have already become acting Hokage again. I'll be reinstated during the one-month intermission between the second part of the exams and the third. During this time, we'll have explained what really happened on your birthday, and you will be revealed as my heir. This village needs to be set straight. Naru. Pay attention. Yelled his mother, as one of her rapidly moving chains flew at him from above. Chastising himself for his own carelessness he vanished in a blur of speed, dodging the chain that then slammed into the ground, splitting the earth, and kicking up chunks of it. He shivered, not wanting to think of what might have happened had he been hit by that, as he appeared behind his mother, a chain of his own already scything towards her. Out of his field of vision, Kishina smiled, proud of the progress her son was making. While Naruto was fighting his mother on the Namikaze Uzumaki clan grounds, across the village, at training ground 7, Kakashi, Kurinai, and Asuma had set their students up for some friendly sparring matches to see how far they'd progressed. Everyone arrived, but Naruto and his absence didn't go unnoticed. Where's Naruto? Asked Ino. Saying she cared may be a bit of a stretch, but she was curious and a gossip. She wanted to know if he'd gotten in trouble or something. Hinata listened intently though. She'd been worried about him for the past month, and now she may finally get some answers on where her secret crush may be. As a select few Jounin, Gai, Kurinai, Asuma, and the clan heads of the major ninja clans had been briefed on the return of the Yandame, they already knew where Naruto was, but their students certainly didn't, and for now it would stay that way. Still Kakashi had to tell them something. 
He figured, at this point, some half-truths were in order. Two members of Naruto's clan made their way here a month ago. They've taken up his training until the Chunin exams, replied Kakashi. He'd already told his students they'd been nominated, and he assumed Kurenai and Asuma had informed their teams as well. And Naruto-kun has a C-clan? Stammered the ever-shy Hayuga. Were they powerful? Inquired Sasuke. Yes, and yes, replied Kakashi, the Uzumaki clan were feared across the elemental nations for their mastery of Fuenjutsu. They weren't just a simple clan either, but the leading clan of a whole village. The village hidden by the whirling tides, Yuzushi Agakur was their home. The Noha had close ties with Yuzushio, which is why we wear their clan symbol on our flak jackets, said the copy nin, pointing to the red swirl, it's in honor of them. Shikamaru furrowed his brow, already having come to the conclusion that something had happened to the Uzumaki when Kakashi had said they were feared. Where? Asked Kiba, what happened to them? The same thing that happened to the Achiha clan, replied the copy nin, shocking the young genin, especially a certain vengeful Achiha, they were wiped out. It happened during the period of world wars. Fearing their might, Iwa, Kiri, and Kumo banded together to destroy the village, and they succeeded, but not without casualty. Though most Uzumaki died in the end, the survivors being scattered across the nations in their desperation to flee, they killed a little over half of the force that attacked them. They'd been outnumbered greatly, so you can understand how strong they had to be to defeat half of their attackers, I'm sure. Why didn't we learn about this in the academy? Asked Sakura. She'd read through all the material thoroughly when she'd attended, and she'd never even seen the clan mentioned once. Kakashi glanced at the other Jounin, which didn't go unnoticed by their genin. Let's just say the village became misguided. With two Uzumaki back in the village, and Naruto undoubtedly becoming a clan heir, I don't see that piece of information remaining buried for very long, replied Kakashi. Before the genin could ask further questions, Kurenai took charge and started their training. Naruto groaned as he fell into his seat at the dinner table. Much like every day before, today had been painful. His training was going well no doubt about that, but it left him extremely exhausted by the end of the day. Thankfully, his resilience as an Uzumaki and the Kaiubi made him more than ready to go through the same experience the next day. Of course that didn't mean he liked the bruises. Tired, Naru? Asked Kishina, smirking, as she put down a bowl of ramen in front of her son. Naruto was pleased when he found out he got his appetite for ramen from his mother and his father. The two of them gave the boy a run for his money, and he guessed he only beat them when it came to devouring the delicious food of the gods, because he'd inherited both of their love for the noodle-tastic goodness. Ishina would have gotten a reply out of her son if it hadn't been for a scream from Minato startling them. There was silence as the two of them looked at each other, eyes wide right up until devilish smirks graced their features. Looks like he found out, smiled Kishina as she went back into the kitchen for another bowl. Her only reply was a tired grunt. Minato ran into the room, glaring at his wife and his son who looked at him as if they were innocent, one of them was tired with a black eye, but meh, details, little angels. You too, growled Minato. Yes, dear chirped Kashina in question. Don't yes, dear me. My hair. My hair, Kashina. Why? I thought the two of you had already got even. He screamed, pointing to his head. What Minato was referring to was his now neon green hair that had streaks of bright orange and pink in it. Why was his hair like this, you may ask. The answer is simple. He'd been pranked and by his own family at that. As for why this prank had been carried out, that answer was also simple. Hey back. It may have been true that Naruto didn't hold grudges, but he had the chance in front of him to get back at his father for the ceiling, and with some convincing from his mother, who was still a little miffed at her husband for doing it in the first place, Naruto decided to go through with his plans. Thus their prank was born. Two weeks ago Naruto dyed Minato's hair purple, and Kishina used Fuenjutsu to make it permanent oh, and one more thing. His hair would change into a random color every two weeks, until the two months of training were up, at which point, he'd get his normal hair color back. Minato hadn't known about that last bit though. You look handsome, dear. Green suits you, replied Kashina, trying to hold back a fit of giggles. Naruto tried as well, and after they managed to remain silent while Minato pouted, the three of them began dinner. Naruto looked at his parents and smiled. He could definitely get used to this. Thanks for watching my video, see you next time, till then sayonara.